Okay, they can start. Please, Maria, 40 minutes. Uh, thank you very much and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here and thanks the organizer for organizing this nice conference. So I will talk about the semi-definite programming bounds for the average kissing number and this is a joint work with Alexander Kolpakov who is also attending here and uh, speaking this afternoon and with Fernando Oliveira. So and I hope you all paid attention in Philippe's talk because he has uh, yeah, a lot of relations between our talks. So uh, Philippe talked about the kissing number. Here we are looking at the average kissing number. And uh, I will first explain the next slides. What is the average kissing number? And then how can we use semi-definite optimization to compute some bounds? Because if you have a very difficult problem, it's always nice to get some lower or upper bounds um, to get some information on the optimal value. OK, so first some example. And on the next slide, I will give you a proper definition. So let's consider R2. We, will have, we have unit spheres and we uh, unit this, we uh, pack them in R2, which means they are not allowed to intersect in their interior. Here we have a hexagonal lattice. So you packing, you would put the center of each disk on a lattice point of the hexagonal lattice. And then each of the disks has uh, six contacting neighbors. So, and um, the, the uh, kissing number, as Philippe said, are the maximum number of contacting neighbors. So the maximum number of unit spheres, which can touch a central unit sphere without the second the interior. But here we are considering a packing and take the average of the kissing number. So we have to compute from each uh, disk the number of contacting neighbors and take the average over it. And here we have six, because here if we pack it in this way, um, each neighbor, uh, each disk has six neighbors. For the usual kissing number, it makes sense that we say all spheres have the same radii. If you would say they can have arbitrary radii, you can just make the neighboring spheres very small and the number just becomes super large. But here we are considering the average kissing number, so we don't care. Uh, we say they can all have different radii. You can, the only thing we wanna know, uh, want is that they don't intersect in the interior. So can we do better than six? If we put, for example, here in the small gaps, uh, some small disk, then for example, the large disk has instead of six, now 12 contacting neighbors, but we take the average. So we also need to consider the contacting neighbors of a small uh, disk, and this has just three contacting neighbors. And if you take the average over all of them, you still have the average is six. But the question is, can we do better? I mean, we can also take some completely different arrangement. And for this, I will now first give on the next slide uh, a definition. What is actually the average kissing number? So we are considering a packing of balls in Rn, which is a finite set, on, set of interior disjoint closed balls. So on the previous example, I sheeted a better set we put on each, um, let us point the disk, but then we would have this infinite packing. Here we take a finite set of it. So we take a finite set of balls which are not intersecting in the interior. And when we can construct the corresponding contact graph, where we say each vertex represents a ball of the packing. So the center of the ball is basically a vertex and two vertices are connected by an edge if the corresponding two balls are touching each other. So here we are saying intersection of these balls are not empty, but they have to be the interior disjoint. So it means not empty means they are touching, they have a common point on the boundary. So now we can define what's the average kissing number. The average kissing number in Rn is the supremum over the average degree of contact graph of a packing of balls in Rn. So if we here in this example, we can say here the centers are all vertices and then we, co we connect two vertices by an edge if the corresponding balls are touching each other. Um, if we now consider the example from before, um, if we could take a finite set of the hexagonal packing, then 
uh, the disc in the center of the packing, they have all six neighbors, but there are also discs on the boundary which have less than six neighbors. If they would have all six contacting neighbors, then we would have this infinite packing. But since it's, we can take a very large set of balls in this packing, in a hexagonal packing, the number of balls which are on the boundary are relatively small. So the supremum will be six, even if the maximum of each of these finite packings is less than six but we can get arbitrary close to it. But well, uh, can we do better than six? Because we don't have to consider the hexagonal letters. We can just have any configuration. So Köbe, Andrew, and Horton prove that contact graphs of packings of disks on the plane are sample planar graphs. So here in our setting, this means each of these contact graphs is a planar graph. And we know about planar graphs that the average degree of a planar graph is strictly less than six, which means that um, for each of the configurations, the average degree is strictly less than six, but we, see, we saw with the hexagonal lattice that we can, that the supremum is gonna be six. So here we know that the average uh, kissing number in dimension two is actually six. So it's the same as the kissing number, but um, yeah. Well, let's see how it is in higher dimensions. So for dimensions strictly bigger than two, the problem is unsolved. So it's interesting to look at, at bounds. Which are bounds? So lower bounds, the kissing number of a lattice. If you have a lattice, you can always put at each center or at each lattice point the disk. And then um, the number of contacting neighbors is the number of uh, smallest vectors in the lattice and then when you take the supremum of this finite set you will exactly get this number so like with the hexagonal lattice so that you can always use as a lower bound for dimension three we know we can do better that the uh, kissing number would be 12 but here we have a lower bound of 12.612 and this was proven by Ep Epstein, Kupperberg and Ziegler so this is all what we know so far about lower bounds about what's about upper bound. So we can construct a pretty easy upper bound. So let P be a packing, R of X be the radius of a ball X in the packing P, and G be a contract graph of the packing P and tau N the kissing number. As I said, as you saw already in uh, Philippe's talk, the kissing number is the, is the maximal number of uh, unit spheres which can, can touch uh, simultaneously a central unit sphere without intersecting the interior. So the number of neighbors of the ball X with radius at least R of X is less or equal to the kissing number. So if you have a ball X and the number of spheres you can put around this one with the same radius is actually the kissing number, that's the definition. But if you say the neighbors can ha have even larger radii than the central ball, then it can just get worse. So less or equal the kissing number. And uh, so the number of edges is less or equal the sum over each ball in the packing. And then you take in the sum the number of neighbors where, where the radius is at least our, um, our, the radius of x. It is greater or equal because if X and Y are con on contacting neighbors and they have both the same radii, we count this edge twice. Okay, and this inner part here in the sum we saw in the previous line that is at most the kissing number. So we have the edge number of edges is less or equal to the kissing number times the balls in the number of balls in the packing. The average degree of a graph is twice the number of edges divided by the number of vertices. Now we know the result of the previous line. This means it is at most twice the kissing number in dimension n. So the average kissing number is upper bounded by twice the kissing number in dimension n. It's pretty easy to show upper bound, and is, um, but it is not a very good upper bound. I mean, for example, here in dimension three, in dimension two, where we know it is of the optimum is six, we would have an upper bound of 12 in dimension three kissing number is 12, so the upper bound would be 24, which is quite far away from 12.612. So um, yeah, it gives upper bounds, but maybe not the best upper bounds. Okay, 
So, but they are also non-trivial upper bounds. So the first non-trivial upper bound was given by Kupperberg and Schramm. It was 14.928, which is way better than the 24, but still quite far away from 12.6. Clausurian refines this approach and got an upper bound of 13.955, so he could uh, improve it quite a lot. And he could extend uh, the approach for higher dimensions to beat the twice the kissing number upper bound for dimension 4 and 5. And our goal is now to refine Clausurian's approach by using semi-definite optimization. So for this, I will now explain what was a Clausurian's approach. Well, first, some notation just to be on the same page, but I think they are clear. So the dot product, I mean, the Euclidean inner product, the unit sphere in, in which n minus one are just points, vectors in n with norm one, distance between two points on the sphere is arcos of inner product. With omega rho, we de de um, denote the surface measure of the sphere of radius rho. A spherical cap with se center x and radius alpha is the set of points on the sphere with inner product at least cosine of alpha, and we can compute its normalized area of this cap by this formula. Okay. So now I will show you what Clausurian actually, um, what his approach was. Okay, so let rho be strictly bigger than one, r strictly bigger than zero, and the dimension at least three, and with vr we denote the ball of radius r tangent to v1. Here's a picture. In black we have a unit ball. It's, um, yeah, it has a uh, norm one. Then we have a sphere, which is here in blue. It has, uh, not, not norm, I meant radius. But it has, the sphere here in blue has radius rho. Rho has to be strictly bigger than one. So basically the unit ball is surrounded by this sphere. And we have a ball of radius r, which is tangent to the ball of radius one. If r is very small compared to rho, or let's say if rho is very large compared to r, then there, there's no intersection. But like here, if uh, they're not too far away, then you have an intersection between the sphere and the ball. So we have here a ball of radius rho r, and we have the sphere of radius rho, and either the, the intersection is empty or it is a spherical cap. And the normalized area of the spherical cap, we denote by a n rho r, which is then the surface measure of this uh, spherical cap divided by the surface measure of the whole sphere. And this is a function which is monotonically increasing in r. So, so the red part here is the normalized area, this a n rho of r. And of course, if we increase r, so make this ball bigger and bigger, this normalized area becomes larger and larger. So a n rho of r increases in r. So, but how does this not help us now to get an upper bound? Um, first, I need to give some definition on the next slide, and then we prove together how we can use this to get an upper bound. Here I state a dilemma which uh, says, if the dimension is at least three, rho is bigger than one and r bigger than zero, so the same as I said on the, like on the previous slide, then, a n rho of r plus a n rho of one over r is at least twice a n rho of one. So a n rho of r was the normalized area of the spherical cap when you intersect this, the ball of radius r. This is uh, not very hard to prove, but it also requires some lines. So it's not just in a proof of two lines. So because of time, I will not show it here, but we will use it. So this inequality we need to, 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 for our proof. Okay, so now we prove the upper bound. Uh, ah, no, one definition first, sorry. So we fix rho, strictly bigger than one. We consider a unit ball at the origin and any configuration of pairwise interior disjoint balls tangent to the central unit ball covers a fraction of the sphere of radius rho centered at the origin. And we denote by dense n the supremum of the covered fraction over all configurations. I will explain now in the picture what I mean by this or what is meant by this. So if you have here a packing, 
Then you have maybe here the next ball and here the next ball. They can have all different radii. And for each of these balls, you have this um, spherical cup in this intersection with the sphere. And um, if we sum up the normalized area of all these spherical caps divided by the whole, um, uh, the whole sphere, we get some uh, density. So basically, we want to know what is the maximal density of packing a sphere by these spherical caps. So in dimension two here in the picture, this is a bit not so easy to show because you can cover everything. But if you are in dimension three and you have the in dimension three the sphere, you cannot cover it completely with spherical caps. You have always some small gaps in between. So with stands n, we just want to know what is the maximal density um, of the packing of this sphere here in blue by these spherical caps, which you get from any feasible configuration. Okay, now we can show how this helps to get the average kissing number. So um, let G be uh, a packing graph of a packing P in Rn. Then we can, uh, and Rx is again the radius of X. So we sum here over two points uh, of uh, each edge, so which is yeah, the connection between the two points X, Y, and we take A and rho of r over x divided by r over y plus a n rho of r over y r, r of y divided by r over x. If we take this sum, then we know that each inner part here of the sum um, is at least twice a n rho of one, because that is exactly what, where we can apply the lemma, which I have written here. We do this for all edges, so this the whole sum is at least two, two times a and row of one times the number of edges. So we can, but now we can also consider the sum in a different way. So let's say n of x is the set of the neighbors of x. Um, so x is always a ball in the packing. N of x is the neighbor, which I mean the contacting neighbor. So, and then we take here the sum and we can just formulate it in a different way. We can just say we sum over each bond in the packing, then we sum over each of its neighbor and take A and row of R of R Y divided by R over A, R of X. Because here, if X is then Y, if we take here, then X is in the sum, then Y is a neighbor, then we would have exactly this part. Then when you have y in the sum here, x is its neighbor, then we have the other part. It's exactly the same, just written in a different way. So now we have a ball x. We sum over all its neighbors and take the normalized area of this ball. We divide the radi all the radii by rx, so then we can use this density because before we said the density is the maximum fraction you can cover by the, sphere, by the spherical caps of the neighboring uh, spheres when the, where the center ball has to have norm one, uh, radius one. Therefore, we divide by r of x that, r, that x has the norm one. So for each in this inner sum has to be less or equal than the density um, of n of rho. That was the one we defined before. So on that we take multiply with the uh, number of balls in the packing. Okay, so if you choose row smaller than what, three, then we know that a n row of one is not zero. I mean, the problem is if a row is too large, then there's no intersection. So the average degree of a graph is two times the number of edges divided by number of vertices. Now we apply this to use these two uh, inequalities, we get that it's less or equal the density of rho divided by a and rho of one. So we know the average kissing number is less or equal the density divided by a and rho of one. And this is important, this we need now to get the, the bounds from Kupperberg and from and Clausurin. So uh, here's the theorem that what we proved in the previous slide. If the dimension is at least three and rho is between one and three, 
then the average kissing number is less or equal the density um, of the, yeah, the density, like I said before, it's the maximal uh, fraction you can cover. So the density of packing spherical caps on the sphere divided by a n rho of one. A n rho of one, it's not an issue. We can just compute it. When you have a concrete n, we just compute the normalized area of a spherical cap of radius alpha. This cosine of alpha is rho squared plus three over four rho. So the only thing which is here unknown is the density. So the density can never be larger than one. So just to get a first bound, we use the density is less or equal one and rho equal to square root of three. So we, because rho has to be between one and three. And if you plug in these two uh, values, then we get an upper bound in dimension three of 14.928. This is exactly what Kupperbeck and Fram did. And Clazirin used this approach and applied it and showed that you can also do exactly the same way at four dimension four and five, or for a higher dimension. So in general, he wrote it. Then, then if you also use these two parameters, you get those upper bounds. You get the, the average kissing number in dimension four is at most 34.68, and dimension five is at most 77.756 which is way better than twice the kissing number. I mean, in dimension four, the kissing number is 24, so the upper bound would be 48, and now he has 34.68, which is a very nice improvement. Uh, unfortunately, from the, or, yeah, let's say, uh, from the dimension six on, twice the kissing number is still better. So I was a bit surprised that this approach didn't beat twice the kissing number, but well, from dimension six on, twice the kissing number gets still a better upper bound. And as I promised before, Clazirin also improved the upper bound in dimension three, and he considered rho equal 1.755, which is pretty close to, to square root of three, square root of three is 1.732. So first time when I read it, I didn't even realize that he used here a different rho. So yeah, he changed it a little bit to 1.755 and could compute an app best, better upper bound than one and got here an upper bound of 13.955. So way closer, way better than 14.9, but still quite far away from 12.6. So this is, um, this was Clazirin's approach. So first Kupperbeck's approach and then Clazirin extended this and gave this upper bound of 13.955. Um, yeah, and now I would like to explain how can we use semi-definite optimization to, um, to improve this, these bounds. Okay, so we are refining Clazirin's approach. First, we have a look at this function a and rho. Um, it's increasing in R. As I said, if R and R gets larger, you see the red part gets larger. But it has also a limit. I mean, even when it gets very, very large, I mean, in the, it just looks at the end a bit like you're cutting with a hyperplane, like this case. So it has a limit in infinity. Then we use also the methods like Philippe used that he said for working with the kissing number, we use points on the sphere and to consider the minimal angular distance. So for the usual kissing number, all of the same radii. So you just say the inner product between X and Y is less or equal the cosine of pi over three. But here in our case, we have to also take into account that they have different radii. So let's say X is the contacting point for the ball with radius R, Y is the contacting point for the ball with radius S, then the inner product X and Y, if this is less or equal one plus R plus S minus R S, divided by one plus R plus S plus R S, which you denote by IP of R S, IP for the kissing number, then um, the corresponding balls with radius R and S do not intersect in the interior. So if this inner product is less or equal this fraction, we know that they are not too close to each other. So the corresponding balls will not intersect. Okay. And uh, then I will also give you a few definitions and then I will show you how the semi-definite program looks like. But I mean, here it is, I mean, it is quite big semi-definite program. So we'll just explain it roughly to get, give you an idea how um, we generate this. Okay, just a few definitions. 
So we need a kernel, a real valued squared integrable function on V times V, the measure space. Such a function F, which is a square integrable, we take here this product we write is the kernel of xy maps to f of x over y. So next page you see this product and just to remind you it's this map. If you have f from 0, 1 to r is a kernel, then we say then a principal sub matrix of f is uh, when you take a finite subset of the 0, 1 uh, interval and then you evaluate it at all these points in this finite set. And we call this a principal sub matrix. And like Philippe said, it is good uh, when we are working on the sphere, we uh, use here always the properties of these um, Gegenbauer polynomials or Jacobi polynomials. So here we have the Jacobi polynomials, the node by P and K, normalized of degree K, normalized in, in the way that the, uh, at one it is one. So what we now want to do is using semi-definite optimization to compute an upper bound on the packing density of packing a sphere by spherical caps. And the spherical caps have, can have different radii. So there were work before where the spherical caps had all the same radii or there was a finite set of possible radii, but we don't want to give a finite set. We want that all, all radii we are considering in this case, which makes the program a bit more complicated. I give it step by step because it is um, quite big, the, the theorem, and I will explain then each of these steps. So we have dimension is at least three, row is between one and three. That is exactly like I said it before. We have the dimension and we have this row which was the radius of the sphere. Now we have a capital R, which is new. So if we have row fixed and the radius, the small r of the ball is smaller than rho minus one over two, then there's no intersection of the ball with the sphere. So we don't care about this case. If the radius becomes very large, we can consider this limiting case. So we said that then A and rho is basically like when you cut it with a hyperplane. So basically we say we are considering the radii rho minus one, from rho minus one over two until a capital R and let's say until radius 30 and everything which is larger than R, we say it's infinity. And this is an in, in, increasing bijection. Then we have a second function from zero one to R, so that A of U is the square root of the normalized area of the spherical cap when you uh, intersect with the ball of radius R U. R U here gives you the radius. And A of one, we consider this limiting case. Okay. Now we are looking again for a function, what Philippe was also talking about, and that we need, he also called it capital F. So this is the function we need here, uh, which sets, has to satisfy some properties. So the function is basically a polynomial of degree D. So we have to give first, which we fix the degree we are considering. Then we consider K from zero to D uh, and have here a kernel for each of them. And the polynomial is a polynomial in TUV. T is the value between minus one and one because that are all possible in a product of two points on the sphere that are, the values have to be between minus one and one. And we have the other, two, we are considering these two points and get for each of these two points, U and V, the corresponding radius. So that is the reason. So basically we have here, this analog here is basically a two point bound for the average kissing number because we are considering two points on the sphere and look on their inner product. Here we have FKUV, which I will exp uh, give some conditions on it, and the Gegenbauer po Jacobi polynomial P and K, which has degree K, and here we go from K to zero to D. So we have some conditions. The first one is that every principal submatrix of F0 minus the product of A A star is positive semi-definite. Second condition, every principal submatrix of Fk from k0 to d is positive semi-definite, where the zero case is already covered in the first condition. And then we have a condition which is like the kissing number condition, Ftuv is less or equal zero, whenever p is between minus one and this ipruv, 
which means we have two points. If their inner product is between minus one and this IP, then we know that they are not too close to each other. So that both points can be in a feasible configuration. If all this is satisfied, then the density is at most the maximum of F1 UU. So this uh, is a very big program. So we, we need um, to write it as a semi-definite program. We need to describe it as A by a polynomial or a step function to approximate this uh, surface um, area, normalized area of these spherical caps. You cannot just use the formula of the normalized area. We have to write it with polynomial or step function. We have to find each of these FK kernels. So we have many kernels here. Before, in the, when you know the semi-definite program for kissing number, here you have, you need to have them positive semi-definite for the one real matrix F, but here we have many FK matrices. So basically, and many functions FK. So each FK is basically a polynomial or a step function. And we have this inequality. Um, I will not have time to prove it. I will also, yeah, I will not prove it here. Just to say it is a short proof, that is all the proof. And here we use also like a bit like the style of leap before did, when you have a feasible configuration, you sum over all of them and use the conditions on the, from the SDP and you get basically exactly what you want. Okay, so I will just show you our result. Um, yeah, I didn't want to focus too much on this technical part from the semi-definite program, just uh, what I wanted to show you is it's possible you can uh, define a semi-definite program for the average case number also, um, but it, it gets very big because here the issue is we consider all possible radii and not just all the same radii or finite set. So, and now I jump basically um, to the um, results. So for dimension three to nine, we computed uh, these bounds. The lower bounds are from four to nine, the one from the kissing number of the lattice. And here the first one, which I showed from the beginning. Um, and then we have this our previous upper bounds for dimension three, four, five is from clear zero. From six, seven, eight, nine is from us. Uh, it's from twice the kissing number, sorry. And then our new upper bounds. As I said, there are different uh, ways how you can get the function small n and all the fk kernels. You can use polynomials and some of sparse conditions for non-negativity. That gives good results, but you can just run it in dimension three and four. Afterwards, the program becomes just too big um, to solve. But we then could also use step functions for the, uh, this uh, and sampling. This approach doesn't work so well then with the polynomials, but the SCP doesn't become so big. So it still gives a very nice improvement. Um, but uh, yeah, in small dimensions, the polynomial approach is better. Um, then as Philippe said, you always get just floating points. So we used four dimensions, three and four, uh, exactly the approach which Philippe explained in the fir first talk to get the exact function, to have a rigorous proof. And for all the other dimension, we um, had to write some other verification script because of the sampling. Um, okay, so that is all what I wanted to show you today. Um, I wanted mainly uh, introduce you to average kissing number because it's not so well studied like other problems like kissing numbers. So I hope there will be more work in, in this relation and to show you that you can also use semi-definite optimization to get an upper bound on the average kissing number. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Itzik. Uh, I like uh, I like your presentation a lot. I believe you know it is uh, you explain everything in details as well as uh, techniques as well as results. Thank uh, you. And actually, my question is: Do what do you think about uh, about this approach? Can 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 consider an approach? Maybe maybe you can add something else because to see what happened after dimension twenty four. What do you think? Can you improve um, I think the, I think the problem is here that the program is so large. I mean, what you could do is if you, for example, would be very interested in dimension three and would like to, to do something better there. Um, as I said, this approach is basically, when you look at the uh, program, it's basically the two-point bound. I mean, you could also 
make a three point bound analog out of it. But here mm. you have just from two points the inner product, which is T, but then you would get three further variables because you have from each of the three the inner product, and here you have UV also one more. So I think that would, for example, just work in dimension, if you are lucky in dimension three, and I think afterwards it just became too huge. I don't know, or whether you can um, explore some symmetries or some other properties to make it smaller that you can still run it. Um, the thing with Clasirian's approach is, um, it, it's, I like it a lot, but um, also this copper back charm, I mean, I'm, uh, it's the same approach, is not like in the kissing number. In the kissing number case, you just have a local view on it, right? You have one ball, you want to know how many points do you put around. So yes. But in the average kissing number, it is important that you have a global view on it, the whole packing, because you don't know whether you can continue like that. But with this approach, you again just look locally on it. You ask what is the maximal, what's the maximal density of a ball you can pack by spheres. So um, it would be interesting um, to study this more. I don't have a good idea to, to do it in a different way, but um, yeah could be better to have not just a local view on it. We also tried, extended the Konelki's approach where you have more look on the whole packing, but then they bounce worse. worse. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, they, you know, they, they exist and the, uh, I mean, this general approach, right, the Elkius Konkumar, but it is, uh, it is not clear what, what you can do with uh, using this DP for this approach, right? Yeah, I mean, with the, the cone Elkis approach where you have the whole packing, there we could also change the SDP in a way that it also gives you a bound for the average guessing number, but it didn't get good bounds. But yeah, um, I have no further idea what you could improve here, especially, or yeah, try to go in high and three point bound and try to make the program smaller by exploring some symmetry, some properties. We are not aware of. Um, yeah, and I think it would also be nice if more people would also study lower bounds, that you also have an idea how bad are the upper bounds. Yeah, thank you. More questions? Comments? I have a few comments. So, uh, Maria and I, and Fernando, mostly, mostly Maria and I, uh, tried to push it to to find the lower bounds, but we didn't find anything really uh, interesting. So in the end, it was a very shameful enterprise. We ended up with nothing. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit disappointing because I mean, just taking the kissing number of the letters, we were sure that there should be something where we use geometry to to just get something better, but it. It's uh, harder than I expected. <laughs> uh, that is interesting because, you know, this, uh, it, it is also from application point of view. You know, this material scientist, uh, scientists, they are interested about that. Because I know, for instance, in some, in some formulas, they're not, they're not using density, they're using this, exactly this average uh, kissing numbers. Okay. That is interesting. Yeah, I know that at least uh, one of uh, material scientists he told me that mm -hmm. for them it is an extremely important uh, contact. Right. Oh, I didn't know. No. Yeah. But yeah. And, uh, and why probably they have something we don't know, some materials maybe also have better. Well, in in in, in materials, uh, the heat transfer uh, sometimes goes through those particles when 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 you have some. So you, say, so you have some medium that is uh, insulating and well enough compared to the particles you had in, a, in some composite materials. And the particles start forming those percolation channels, and and, and then the contact number becomes important because if any uh -huh. particle has a lot of neighbors, then you have a lot of flow going through through each of those. So it's one of, of the things I know, but I, I know it only vaguely. Um, so it's called so-called uh, energy concentration phenomenon and composite materials. No, no, because my, my, my father basically does material science. And uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, well, yeah, we tried to do some random computations, you know, so somehow create uh, lower bounds from random sphere packing or ball packing. 
but it's not a good idea. And I think theoretically, it is it is known that um, like random kissing number, random random packing density cannot be really uh, really big. Yeah, well, so it is for all participants, you know, it is in three dimensions. We have very simple question. How to do, do or can we, can we beat this uh, lower bound 12.612, uh, right? Because just to, to show exactly, to show some, some, uh, some taking, right? Different radio, uh, different radii, and to 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 show that it can be probably uh, because there's a big difference between uh, lower bound and upper bound. I think it is also interesting, very interesting from uh, uh, also interesting from from uh, applications. Uh, probably we have to we, we can see periodic actually. What is wrong with periodic? If you would like. You can also see periodic. I mean, you don't, don't have to consider lattice picking, right? If the periodic picking is enough. If you... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Lattice picking, right? This is... Yeah. Yeah. It is actually, it is not lattice. It is called cloud code. It is a crystal, right? Because it is not lattice. Uh, it is a union of lattices. Mm. Because it's different. Right? Union of this. Uh, yeah, it is something like no, lattice. You can, you can say lattice picking also. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah.